It's such a pleasure to be back here uh, in Australia, back home, um, where we can just talk Aussie. And uh, uh, a lot of you are regulars. Uh, anybody here who's new, first time at a Moodle Moot? Wow, geez, like 50% or more at least. Um, that's so great, that's so good. So uh, thanks for coming along. I think um, we've outdone ourselves with Moodle branding at this Moot. Uh, it's pretty insane. We're going to see uh, like a hundred logos at once, even on the laptop. So, um, look, I'm going to talk about uh, what I've been doing lately, uh, the last year. Quite a lot of stuff since the last conference here in Australia, which is, was in Brisbane about nine months ago. Um, the company, what we're, what we're doing, basically. And then start getting to the future stuff, which is where things get interesting, because we're living in very interesting times. Uh, so I come from Whoop Whoop, about here. Um, I'm Australian, but I'm, I'm half German and half Greek. My parents are German and Greek. Um, so I've, I've always sort of regarded myself as a, as a citizen of the planet. Of course we are, right? It's just a little ball we all live on there. Um, and uh, lately, I have been going around that ball a lot. So last year, I did 380,000 kilometres. It's about... 10 to 12 times around, and um, 64 cities. 50% of my time I was on the road. So I'm getting pretty good at packing. Uh, there's a photo there, that's the UK moot. Uh, that's me with some gorillas in Rwanda, which, which I know it sounds really uh, stereotyped, but it, it is an amazing experience. Um, yeah, that's uh, over in the Philippines, and that's France, and this is the Australia Moot last year, and that's Africa, South Africa. That's the Barcelona office, the Moodle office. And uh, I'm going to a lot of Moodle conferences, but I'm also going to a lot of non-Moodle conferences and having a lot of meetings with various organisations and things. Um, the reason I can do that is because Moodle is very pervasive in the world. In fact, in, in many uh, places, much more so than, than here in Australia. Um, that's the current sort of statistics. We have 106,000 plus registered Moodle sites, and uh, they're only the ones who registered. Uh, but really interesting is looking at the deltas here, because in, in about two months, um, they increase something like this. So it's like three million new users every, every two months, and it's eight million forum posts, and 200 million quiz questions. Uh, so it's a lot of infrastructure, a lot of responsibility on the project, and it also means that I can get a meeting with a lot of people. I can just say, hey, let's have a meeting. They go, oh, yes, oh, yeah, Moodle, we heard of that, and I can get in the door. So there's a lot of doors I can get into. And so I'm starting to really use that. I'm starting to think, um, how best can I use that? Uh, these were some statistics from uh, mid-last year. It's around 60% of higher ed uh, is using Moodle globally. And mostly you hear news that comes out of the US because the US dominate the English-speaking internet, and so you'll often hear about that. But what you don't hear is all of that. And I'm visiting a lot of that. So uh, let's, go on a bit of a, let's go on a bit of a trip. I haven't planned anything for this. I'm just going to freeform it. Let's go look around the world a little bit. So um, this year, I've spent a lot of time in around Asia, and uh, in uh, Indonesia, and um, um, in uh, Taiwan, and Korea, and Japan, and the Philippines, and, and China. Uh, very interesting what's happening, in, it's hard to generalize, all those countries are so different, but if I generalized a little bit, it's that um, there's a lot of change going on, there is a lot of um, a lot of people trying to upskill very quickly, like as a nation, and there's a lot of training initiatives going on. And there's a lot of, um, not only Moodle, a lot of local products, a lot of, a lot of things being tried. There's a lot of centralization, a lot of SaaS platforms popping up, uh, and um, all sorts of government initiatives, and, and it's incredible. Um, but 
there's not many other uh, software products in the world that, that can talk to the education ministry in Cambodia and say, hey, why don't you run a Moodle moot? And they say, oh, that's a good idea. Yes, we will. Um, because we are an open source project, you know, it's, it, it works. Um, gosh, China's interesting. Anyone been to China recently? It's a couple of people. I was, I was amazed, actually. You walk in the streets, it's just silent. There's cars and bikes everywhere, but they're all electric now. It's just quiet and clean. Super, you know, like it's, it's like going into the future. Um, uh, it was uh, surprising, actually, the level of tech around the place. Also, they don't, really, they don't have Google much. They don't really use it. Um, they, don't have, they don't use Android apps. They don't, uh, they don't use Apple that much either. They have WeChat and maybe a couple of other apps. And the WeChat app does everything. So they have apps inside that app. Uh, if I wanted to you know, give you 10 bucks, you just open your WeChat app and you have a QR code and I just bloop, and I pay you 10, 10 bucks immediately. Well, not, not, not dollars, obviously. Um, but uh, you know, they're working out a lot of things. Of course, the government's hand is in everything. And the surveillance thing going on there is quite uh, an interesting um, story. And there is Moodle everywhere. I discovered um, in Beijing the world's biggest Moodle site only a couple of months ago. Two million active users. Like they have three million users total, but this one university has two million users. 20,000 users are accessing their Moodle site in any given moment, like concurrent users. Like it's enormous scale. So if you if you worry about you know, whether Moodle can scale, there's a very good example right there. Um, they're holding the Moodle Moots next year, if you want to go, um, in Beijing. And we thought, well, let's go for a thousand people. Why not? Because there's, there's so many people. There's so much going on there. Uh, India. Um, Again, there's a lot of Moodle too. It's funny, the Moodle moots there tend to be all mostly um, developers. There's like 50, 60 percent uh, small companies and consultants all doing lots of little things for people. The universities and people who work, who are teaching, can't afford to come to moots. They can't afford to travel across India uh, to come to a conference. So um, we finally realized that, second, third time around. So next year, what we're going to do is a traveling road show. We're going to have like a one-day event and maybe five or six of them and go to different cities. And uh, I'll probably get a T-shirt printed up with a tour. I've always wanted to be a, a rock and roller. Um, and we'll, we'll do a, a rock and roll tour through India. Um, Africa, it's like 90% Moodle there in, in um so many places, and I haven't been there so much. Rwanda, beautiful country actually. Rwanda, you, Australia could learn a lot, and I, this is something I've noticed a lot in these countries that you know we often characterise as developing, and they need our help. Geez, we need their help. Like when I go to Rwanda, the place is so damn nice, and they they're advanced in in ways that I wouldn't have expected. So. You know, they had a genocide in 94. A million people killed in a hundred days with machetes and pushing holes and things like that. Like, how horrible. Just, just comprehend the scale of that. A million people in a hundred days. And a lot of you probably remember it on the news, but it was kind of a, it was kind of a blink, right? Just kind of blinked by on the news. There's a few pictures. I don't think we really grasped it. When I was there... I could really see it. And the whole country is reeled back from that experience, which was created by Europeans, incidentally, Belgians and French, over 20 years. Um, and they've gone, no, we're going to change how things work here. And they do things like, for example, every month they have a community service day, and everybody from the president down gets out in the streets on a Saturday morning, and they pick up rubbish, they dig trenches for optic fibres, they paint schools, they do work in their local communities. Then at lunch, they all, have, they all brought their lunch, groups of two, three hundred, they sit down, have lunch together, and they pass a megaphone around, and everybody can have a bit of a spray about what they think should be done next month. And this kind of community 
building and community spirit. I mean, wouldn't it be awesome if we did that here? Like, we are doing it here. We've got 300 people here for this. But imagine if we did it every month with our neighbours. You know, um, instead, we have, you know, you just got to look at your Twitter feed, look at the, what's going on in the world, right? It could be probably fixed with a little bit more humanity. Uh, this year, later this year, uh, we are having a, a, a conference in, in Cote d'Ivoire, in Abidjan. And uh, that's going to be very, uh, really exciting, actually. Europe is Europe. Uh, very, very established Moodle stuff in Europe. Actually, tonight I'm flying to France this, uh, this evening uh, for the French Moodle moot, so I won't be able to stay for the party, and I'm really pissed off about that, but um, I have to get there. Um, uh, uh, the same thing happened last year, actually, that's, uh, if you, some of you might remember. Um, South America is, uh, again, so much going on. There, is a, there are some very, very large um, things here. So in, in uh, well, Central America, Mexico, there's a university called UNAM that's been using Moodle for 10 years. They have something like 350,000 students. And they're very, very uh, capable. They've become a kind of a Moodle service organization for, for Mexico. They're helping all these other universities with it, and, and they have very advanced use. I dropped a tweet. I said, hey, I'm going to be in Mexico City. Uh, if anyone wants to, wants to get together, let's do it in a week. And the next Saturday, we had 200 people, nearly this, in a room, and we had an impromptu Moodle moot on a Saturday morning at the university, and then we all went out afterwards. It was the Day of the Dead, you know, where everyone dresses up like skeletons and stuff. It's insane. Um, yeah, so uh, the US, uh, yeah, I just don't want to go there anymore. <laughs> no, I, I do. I, I, I love the people there, but uh, um, God, they're having a lot of trouble, aren't they? Um, I hope they can sort that out. Anyway, I won't go on about this too long. Let's get on with the, the presentation here. So, what's happening in the company? Um, we are pretty spread out over the world. We are now numbering 80 people in Moodle uh, headquarters, almost doubled in the last year. There's a lot of new people, a lot of new faces, um, and a lot of reorganizing of how we do things, and I wanted to explain a little bit of that. We have two major offices now in, uh, in uh, Perth and in Barcelona, and people scattered all over the place. So we have to work at being a company in that situation. Everybody's remote, basically. Like, we always have to pretend we're all remote all the time. Even in the offices, we work online all the time. And that's how work is now. So we, We've actually really relaxed our whole rules about when you have to come to the office. Basically, no one has to come to the office at all. Uh, we're actually downsizing our Perth office. Um, we're, still we're still having one, but um, we're trying to allow everyone to work from wherever they are all the time. And uh, look, it's not easy, but it's, it's just inevitable that we're going that way. I sometimes use this metaphor to refer to Moodle, um, the organization, as a ship. And sometimes it's a spaceship, but more often lately it's been uh, this um, sailing ship or a pirate ship. Um, and uh, the way it works is like this. So we have uh, five main functions going on. We've got down here, Rowan, who you just met. He's, he's a CFO, he's, he keeps the, the company afloat, he keeps the lights on, uh, he looks after all the admin, money, companies, audits, valuations, blah, 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 all this stuff, which is essential. Making sure we all get paid and, that, um, and his team uh, is looking after the culture and the people and the hiring and all of that. Uh, Gree, uh, who you meet later today, uh, joined us about eight, nine months ago and is in charge of products. The products are like the masts. So we need our products to be strong, we need them to be aligned, and um, they, they're basically what's going to let this, us move forward as an organisation. Of course, you've got to hang some sails on that. 
So uh, Juan Luca is a new chief commercial officer. Now, we don't do a lot of sales ourselves, but we have partners. Our Moodle partners are our sales organizations. So this team um, primarily looks after all of the partners around the world. And we now have channel partner managers uh, in different regions. Um, and uh, Fiona Ong is here with us. We've got a lot of the Moodle HQ are here at this, this conference. Uh, over there, we've got uh, Kay, who's also here, uh, marketing. So that's all the flags, our insignias. Um, I would include probably the guns. Occasionally, we have to go to war against something. Um, but uh, mostly, it's, uh, it's uh, our branding and insignia. And then, you know, at the wheel, it currently is me. Um, that's the Moodle Moot party last year in Brisbane. Uh, so that's the, the pirate at the helm, yar. So I sometimes refer to this group as the High Five. Um, that was the alternate image. Um, <laughs> not, not quite uh, as good as that one, I think, but uh, yeah. So, look, it's very serious business. It's very serious. Our, our mission is empowering educators to improve our world. It's a very, very uh, uh, serious mission. Every word here is important. And educators is highlighted because we focus on the people in local areas who make it happen. Right? We're not trying to teach people directly. This is what it looks like in Chinese, in Mandarin. No, it's Chinese. Um, so we're, what we're trying to make is a platform, and there are six pieces to the platform. I'm not going to go into it too deeply, because um, we have Gree coming on later. But they all, together, they all work together. They're all parts of one platform. Uh, we have five values that we'd like to make up front. We don't want to bury it in a page on our website. We want it to be something that the whole community can, can get on board with. Um, these are the values that make it I think, easier to work with us um, because the Moodle company is just the core of a much larger ecosystem of thousands and thousands of people. So education is like number one. It's about education. Education is what's going to make the world a better place. Um, and we're always learning. Everyone's learning. And you need to realize that. So even when you get annoyed with someone, you've got to realize, well, they're, always, they're just learning and I'm learning and we're learning together. Um, openness. We're open source, but we try and be open as much as we possibly can. Um, and we try and encourage other people to be open as well. Uh, respect. We endeavour to treat everybody with respect. And that means really recognising all cultures and even competitors and just everything, because it's all, it's all one little planet. Um, and uh, we, we've got to try and... Um, uh, I guess, always continually reawaken ourselves. So it's, it's all about cultures, languages, genders, um, all of these things. There's so much push in society for those things right now, which makes so much sense, right? And, and that's uh, one of our values too. Um, integrity. So we try and be ethical, honest, and fair. Uh, that's always something to strive to do. Uh, I hate talking about things in the future in that... I don't, want it, I don't want it to not work out and then be vaporware. And then, oh, yeah, you said this is going to happen, and then it didn't. Um, so I really try and avoid too many uh, stuff until I know it's going to happen. And I try and encourage that uh, with all of us. And lastly, innovation. So our whole project is designed so other people can innovate. We are not trying to control innovation from the middle. We're trying to actually build things that other people can build on top of. So there's a lot of stuff going on. What, what's our focus? Uh, last year, I talked about our eight goals. Um, this year, I'm going to talk about how, what we're using to decide to work on here um, and uh, to achieve those goals. So I want to focus on this word in the mission, the empowering bit. What does it mean to give an educator power? This is a very hard word to translate, actually. Um, a lot of languages can't translate that word very well because it has a lot of meanings in English. Right? You know, it could be like a dictator having power uh, or an you know, imbalanced relationship 
or, um, but in this case, when we say empowering, we're talking about the ability to do more, um, to feel like that they can do enough to do the job in front of them. So there are three main components the way I see it, right? You need, when you're sitting in front of your laptop, and you've got a job to do, to teach X number of people some subject and get them all through it, you need tools, you need resources. So you know, the tools can be computers and software and all of that stuff. Resources would be time, uh, support from your organization, other people around you, the team to, to help you, graphic designers perhaps, or instructional designers and things like that. Uh, and lastly, you need skills. You need skills to be able to bring all that together to bear on the problem in front of you. You need to be able to deliver. And when you're on the coalface, you need to be teaching and making sure those students are uh, having a good experience, no matter what the education uh, scenario is. So these are the um, nine things, main things, that we're focusing on. And they're all parts, they all work together. So there's some under the tools, some resources, and some are skills. And I want to go through them very briefly now. So the first one is the Moodle product, the main Moodle LMS. We're starting to call it Moodle LMS, just to distinguish it from everything else that's Moodle, right? So the Moodle LMS. Um, it's important to recognize that that consists of Moodle Core, which is the product we release every six months, which is about 60% built by the developers at Moodle headquarters and about 30% contributions that come in from the community um, uh, by our very hard-working integration team who, who get that in. And then there's the Moodle plugins, and there's like 1,600 Moodle plugins in our plugins database. That's a lot of code. There's more code there than in core. And not to mention all the many thousands of plugins that are not released publicly that people have just created locally for whatever purpose. Just because you've added a few plugins to it doesn't mean it's not Moodle LMS. It's still Moodle LMS. So that's why I'm including them in this diagram here. That means that a lot of what we, have to, what we do is actually support those people. Developer support going on. Uh, we have one chat in Telegram, actually, with 800-something Moodle developers from around the world. Plus, you know, there's, there's many, many, many more on Moodle.org. Moodle Workplace. Has anyone not heard of Moodle Workplace before? Can I have some hands? A few people haven't, okay. So we only announced it in February, and it's a new initiative. Um, Moodle Workplace is a version of Moodle that is focused and, and uh, centered on the workplace training area. H how many people here are in workplace training, would you say? Would you teach people at work skills? Okay, it's about nearly 40%. That's fantastic. Uh, how many people here are higher ed? Definitely university or further education. Um, okay. I confused it by saying further education, didn't I? It's about 30, 40%. How many people here from K-12 in schools? One, two, that went up fast, it was good to see. Three, four, five, six, seven, not enough. We have to work on getting more of you here. We need some help on that. Um, how many others? Any others? Yeah? What? What do you do? Oh, no, you're working, you're working at Catalyst. That doesn't count. Okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's a lot of people who, who are working on Moodle services around the place. So what Moodle Workplace is, is there's Moodle Core. Moodle plugins still work. You can still you put any Moodle plugin on top. A um, couple of, you have to be a bit careful sometimes in case they conflict with this set of plugins. This is the, uh, the Workplace plugins, and quite a big investment's gone into that. Spent like... Uh, I don't know, a couple of, at least a couple of million bucks on this. So this is um, a set of plugins that bring a whole lot of extra features to it. I'll let Gree explain more. But I wanted to just explain that um, Workplace is made up of these pieces and that we, our plan is that some of these features will come into core over time, but not immediately. And you can see there's a bit of a different brand. It's really focused at that market. 
It turns out 60% of our revenue for Moodle comes from this sector. That's why it was worth making something for that sector. Uh, we make Moodle apps. So the Moodle LMS has apps. There's two options. You can get the free app or you can get a branded app. And um, we look after both. They have almost the same functionality. This a little bit extra functionality, but the, the main thing is it's branded. Looks like your, your uh, brand. And same for Workplace. There's like a Workplace app and there's a branded Workplace app. Uh, we have Moodle partners. We have a lot of Moodle partners. There's like 90 Moodle partners around the world. Here's some of their logos. Um, all sorts of companies, big and small, that are working together with us and helping to support the Moodle project. The, the, the most of Moodle development is paid for by Moodle partners. The ones you need to worry about are these three lovely people, um, catalysts, e-creators, my learning space, uh, all of them are here, all of them have quite a contingent here, so talk to them if you have any services needs or you want to just get some advice. Um, all of them have been partners for quite a long time now and uh, are really good at, what, at, at their, their jobs. Uh, we also have integration partners. We have uh, only a few right now, but the plan is to really expand this quite significantly. It's taking a long time to add them because we had a couple of misfires where we started to add some integration partners and then we found out that the, their code was crap. Let's put it that way. So it wasn't going to do anyone any favours to us to recommend, hey, use this, if it's going to be bad performance or whatever. Uh, it's nobody's fault, it's just the integrations weren't good enough to be used in all the many places where Moodle needs to be used. So we brought in a lot more quality checks, which is slowing the process down. Um, but uh, uh, what I would like to say, if, if, if we're going to put the Moodle name behind an integration, that we, we've checked it, we've reviewed it, it has a certain level of quality. Um, but you will be seeing some more coming up uh, in the near future. Uh, Moodle Cloud. That's a lot of Moodles in the cloud. It's about 38,000 currently. Uh, it's a really active system and uh, growing, and, and we have, it's all mostly small Moodles. You won't be running a university on there, but um, it fits a lot of cases, and it's, it's really interesting for us to have some direct experience of people using Moodle. We have the Moodle Net project, um, which is finally available in a sort of beta form. We're just testing it. Um, and what it is, is your, your Moodle site will be able to connect to a Moodle Net server, which connects to all the other Moodle Net servers around the world. And it forms a kind of a network. It's a federated network. There is no central dependency. There is a central server for searching. You can search them all. So they're all going to be publishing information to a search server, but everything is streaming around to all the servers. And it's harder to build something that way. It's not based on Moodle. This is a whole new code. It uses uh, Erlang as a language and um, Elixir as a framework. It's all new technologies. Uh, it is open source. Uh, it uses ActivityPub standard protocols, and uh, it's really coming along quite well. It's a social network in the end. What the point of it is, is that you, sitting here in your Moodle site, about to teach something, are able to reach out into a world of content. This is about content. To find really useful content that's been curated for you, teachers like you, teachers with the same needs. So if you're teaching a very obscure language combination, then you're going to find all the other people who are teaching that language combination in the, in the place, in, the, in here, and you've together curated resources from around the internet. We have development partners. So we, there's quite a lot of uh, projects on the go. Um, these are all organizations that we have things in various stages with, uh, or have done recently. Um, I'm very, very interested in working with these guys and those guys and the World Bank down here. Uh, when I was in Africa last year, uh, a little lady came up to me, about this tall, and um, 
really lovely Indian auntie, and she says, hello, I'm your biggest fan. And I said, who are you? And she says, I run the e-learning division at the World Bank. And I went, wow. And she goes, we've been using Moodle for 10 years. And every project we do at the World Bank, we use Moodle. And I'm like, how? And she goes, well, we loan money for these big projects, development projects. We want to make sure they succeed. There's a lot of training to do. Everybody needs to learn. We implement a, a learning management system. We use Moodle. And I'm like, why haven't you ever called us before? A um, couple of months later, I went and visited, spent a couple of uh, hours talking with the whole team. And so we're going to be working together a lot more. Uh, it, it really makes a lot of sense for development organizations, because they have a lot of projects, uh, to work with open source, because we have a lot of code and a lot of need for funding. Um, but that funding goes into something that has a wide social impact. If they need a f something added, we put it in Moodle, you all benefit. And so that helps their project succeed because it has a bigger social impact. It helps us because we get funding, and so just they're very, they work well together. And so that's why we're pursuing more and more of these projects. Uh, a couple of months, a few months ago, I joined the board of the Open Education Consortium. Uh, and we're also, well, we're working with them pretty closely on a number of things. They're mostly focused on OER, I would say. Most of their members are about open education resources, but uh, it's not only about that. And so I'm there really pushing the technology stuff. Let's get more focus on technology. Um, IEEE are doing a lot of useful things, standards arena and education stuff. Um, I, every time I go and visit those guys, I try and like uh, wake them up a little bit because they're always, it's usually quite old professors and they're young PhD students who are, you know, doing the presentation at the end of their research and they've done some project which is great and it's about e-learning and maybe, you know, 30-40% of them used Moodle. They publish the research. Done. What happens? doesn't go anywhere. Didn't, nothing happened out of it, you know? I'm like, oh, come on, work with us, you know? Work with the project. Again, get your stuff into the, into the world. Uh, and the Moodle Users Association is a development organization uh, that uh, we started, but we're not, we're not uh, running. They're independent. And anybody here a Moodle User Association member? Got a couple? One, two, three? Not enough. Join it. So this, this association uh, pays for, decides on, and pays for new core features. So you, if you've got something you really want to see done, you can suggest it in the association. If everybody likes it and votes on it, it gets picked and done. So it's a shortcut on the roadmap. Lastly, oh, that was all about resources different things we're doing for resources. Uh, skills. So the Moodle Educator Certification Program, look, ultimately, you're going to get a certificate. Uh, and it's going to look something like this. And there are 22 competencies possible. Uh, if you were here yesterday, you would have heard Solange talking a lot about it, uh, about one of the, uh, particularly one of them. Um, and I'll let Gree talk about this more later. But uh, this is our initiative to help improve the level of knowledge and the competencies to teach online, particularly with Moodle. And finally, uh, Moodle conferences. We have a lot of Moodle moots around the world. These were they were last year, and um, they're all happening again this year too. And uh, that's the French one where I'm heading tonight. Phew. Um, for the first time, we're holding a global Moodle Moot this year. We've never done this before. This will be a regular event. It's always going to be in Barcelona. It's a little different. It's still a three-day conference, but everything will be translated in English and Spanish. It'll be bilingual, which covers a quite large proportion of the world. Um, also, our plan is to have every Moot in the world find a bit of budget to choose somebody from the moot, probably like the best paper 
or uh, you know, by some criteria they come up with, to pay for them to go to this group. Because I am so lucky. I am meeting groups of people all around the world and, and all these different mo- cultures. Um, and Moodle's done differently all around the world. And I kind of want them all to meet each other. So if we can get one or two people from all the moots coming into this thing, it's going to be great. Uh, so that's... that's uh, it, this replaced Moodle Spain. It's just grown into this larger thing. And it's a beautiful, beautiful city. I'm actually going to be moving there uh, slowly. Still, still getting there. Uh, I'm kind of really easing into it. All right, lastly, I want to get into some future stuff here. Um, what's this mean? Improve our world. There are really bad things happening. Uh, this has got to be top of the agenda, right? You can't do anything, can't do anything else unless we fix this inequality in so many ways. It's getting worse and worse. In most parts of the world, we're trending towards greater inequality. Uh, pollution. We are polluting the planet. Uh, you know, I can't believe in Australia we, 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 we you know, said, oh, we're not going to use plastic bags anymore. as this tiny little initiative, really, in the scheme of things, but we couldn't even get that right. You know, now, you just get a thicker plastic bag that breaks. Um, and it's just uh, crazy, but it, I mean, it's a start, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm walking out of the supermarket with armfuls of stuff sometimes. Um, but, uh, you know, in Rwanda, for example, they have these amazing thin cotton bags, which they can give out for free because they're completely biodegradable and awesome. It's like, why haven't we got those? I don't know. Someone's, someone's selling plastic somewhere. So. This is the, uh, these are the sustainable development goals. I am going to harp on about them until they're all fixed. Um, this is the UN has, has laid down 17 major goals that we, we this is the global agenda, basically. Um, and all of these, these are the kinds of things that we need to be working on. And basically, they're so important. They're about the sustainability of the planet, right? Not even making it awesome just making it sustainable. They're so important that if we aren't in some way contributing towards these, then, you know, get off the planet. Um, now, Moodle clearly is connected to quality education, as a lot of you are, but education is what drives all of it. It's literally the most important one. So, I think we need to be thinking a lot more long-term. Um, and we need to be thinking, what kind of people do we want in the next generations? We want people who think globally, who are multiculturally aware, who are environmentalists, who are caring people, right? People with heart, who are citizens, who are interactive, who get involved. Unfortunately, our governments are just not really helping that much, particularly in Australia. <coughs> but no, in a lot of countries, in a lot of countries, because just the, the design of democracy in most countries is just not really, it's not working out. A lot of people are getting critical of the whole bloody design of it. Because there's these election cycles and, you know, money is playing a huge role. The corporate world is getting more and more of an influence and lobbying for certain things. And, and they're not thinking long term towards that, right? They're thinking short term, next elections. It's the system. I don't blame the people, but it's the systems. Um, the, the big companies that are dominating the planet these days are focused on profits. Profit is extra money. So you've done the business, you've got leftovers, that's the profit. Why? Oh, well, who does that go to? It goes to just a few people who own the business. That's not great. That means there's a lot of uh, exploitation going on at some level. It doesn't make sense to charge for digital copies of things, right? The physics says it doesn't make sense. Once you've made something, to duplicate it costs zero. Like you're making some electrons, you're moving some electrons around, that doesn't cost anything. So it, to charge for it is to try and replicate some older model where you sold things and to try and bring that in the digital world. It doesn't make sense. That's why open source makes sense. NGOs are doing some great work. 
they are doing it in pieces. I literally sat last year in online educa in a room with 12 or so NGOs who had all built courses teaching the SDGs and they'd all built the same ones again and again, like separately. And they were all using Moodle too, which made it even funnier. And we're all in the room and I'm like, come on guys, why aren't we doing this together more? We've just wasted a lot of public money here. So, standards are a good thing. Once you have standards, you kind of force a lot of behaviour. You know, if you say, we're going to have a community day, if the president says, they're going to have a community day once a month on a Saturday morning, it becomes standard, you know, peer pressure, right? You just do it. Uh, if roads make you drive on the left or the right, you do it. Um, if we can force people to have the right behaviours by oh, taking away plastic bags was a good try, if, then you, know, you, can, you can drive a lot of behaviour through standards. But it's not the full answer. All of these things have got to come together for the common good. And I think the best thing we can do as a, as a species is get those SDGs into the curriculum at every level and soft skills as well. Right? Criti critical thinking and interpersonal relationships and all of those things. How do we get that into every curriculum? And I think we need to do it through a global open infrastructure. When I say every curriculum, I mean every curriculum. So if you're teaching engineering, you might think, well, there's not much room for me to talk about inequality. But yes, there is, because you're going to have examples in your teaching. The examples can show some example of inequality in, in which you apply engineering to fix that problem. For example, uh, if you're teaching mathematics, you can say, uh, you know, what's 10 minus 4? It's 6. Or you could say, hey, you have 10 apples and you give 4 apples to a homeless person on the street. Now how many apples do you have? Right? So it's all just approach. And if, you, if we build that into content, if we build that thinking, we can start changing minds and creating different sorts of people. When you fly around the world, there's no borders. You know, when you look out of a plane, it's just a continuum. Um, uh, open infrastructure lets ideas spread really rapidly. They kind of uh, ignore... I mean, Moodle got into 60% of higher ed, not because I went through any governments or any policy making or anything, just made it open like a virus. So, um, open education, open technology, they're the answers in my, in my view. That's the things we should be working on. Open technology means the sorts of things we used to do in Moodle. You know, you can customise it, localise it, you can choose who you want to look after it. Look after it yourself, or get someone else to do it, or get someone else to do it. Uh, it's sustainable, it should be sustainable. It shouldn't disappear if a company dies or a person disappears, and it shouldn't, and it shouldn't set standards, some sort of de facto standards um, that uh, allow everybody to, to innovate on top. Turns out, a lot of the world is like that. A lot of the internet is like that. All those big Silicon Valley companies are completely based on open source software. Google, you know, it's running on Linux. Right? Apple is running on, on Unix. So, my challenge is to everybody is how can we build open e education infrastructure for the next 100 years? Let's go big. Let's stop thinking two years, one year, right? All grants are always three-year projects for some reason. Let, let's think big. What's the big plan? I don't have all the answers here, but I think we do need to have a bigger plan. Um, I don't think just leaving it up to the capitalist system to work it out is working out. Um, we're getting down some very dangerous roads. People are, you know, some, some people are controlling a lot. Some people have agendas that aren't for the many. It's got music, this one. So, so we're having a conference. Uh, we are starting a conference called Open EdTech. It's going to be in Barcelona in November. It happens to be the two days after the global Moodle Moot. Um, 
But it's not just for Moodlers. This is for everybody interested in open education technology and building that, that plan. Uh, it has a theme song, which I made myself. Thank you very much. Um, it has a website, openedtech.global. Whoops. Well, that didn't work. Okay, let's go there. So if you look on the website, ah, uh, well, that's great, isn't it? Here we go. Um, you can find out a bit more about it. Uh, there is a podcast there. I've started a podcast. You know, I'm coming into like 10 years ago. Um, but I'm having a bit of fun with it. I, I'm recording things on my travels. I'm doing all these trips. So every trip, I'm interviewing people as I go. Really, because I meet so many interesting people. So now I'm just interviewing them. And I'm capturing bits of audio from here and there, and I'm collaging it together into this podcast. So if you search for Open Ed Tech on any iTunes or Spotify or anywhere, you'll find the podcast. So tune in. I just started it. It's only four episodes so far. There's more coming. Um, but we just opened registrations, and uh, yeah, things are starting to come together. So check that out. Um, the point, what's happening here is these people are coming. Um, let's open that up again. So we want open source developers. We want open source CEOs, people who are running projects and companies, people who build infrastructure. You know, when I'm in Uruguay, um, they use 100% is Moodle. It's become national infrastructure, right? So that should be a government data center run thing. Uh, Education researchers, if you are doing some research in this area and you are wanting to make it real, come and talk to all these people. Um, and we're pulling them all together. So there's going to be a lot of networking, a lot of strategy. The, the end result uh, of the two days will be a Barcelona Open Ed Tech. Well, I started with declaration, but that was taken. There already was one. Uh, Accord sounded good. Blueprint was nearly out. Maybe treasure map. I don't know. We're going to have some statement of the plan that we've worked out in two days. And I want everyone to sign it. So to finish up, that's uh, where we are. And uh, uh, I, I, if, if I think if I can do a small part to help inspire people to think outside of the, your own current context, Think bigger. I'm just basically saying to everybody, think bigger, right? How can you contribute to bigger things globally? How, how can we, as a group brought together by one piece of software, uh, how can we contribute to the bigger things out there? That's my challenge for you for the next couple of days, um, and i really love to hear from you. I was going to have some time here for a lot of yarn, a lot of questions. Um, we might have room for one. Georgie's shaking her head. Uh, okay, we have a, another session this afternoon. Save it for then. We'll have a bit of question time um, then. Um, but it's been a real pleasure to be back and nice to see you all. Thanks for coming. And uh, enjoy the conference next two days.